And welcome back to CBSN Originals. Now, throughout our first half hour, we explored how cryptocurrencies are reshaping towns across the U.S. But to many investors, it's actually blockchain, the underlying technology behind cryptos, that has the potential to reshape the world. I spoke to Gary Tan, the co-founder of a venture capital firm that just invested $2.1 million in blockchain technology. He tells me why he sees this as the future. Blockchain is basically a new type of database, and you know, databases are the fundamental way that uh, computers store information. And so the really special thing about this particular type of information storage is that there's not one single entity that controls it and determines you know, this is what is truth. Um, and so one way to look at it is actually a book. Uh, if you have a bank, you, uh, you'll have a book that keeps track of um, the values of every single bank account um, in that, in that uh, bank. And what this allows uh, lots of computers all around the world to do is not have a single book, but instead of one person writing to it, it could be uh, millions of different people or different uh, computers writing to that book. And so you can truly have sort of a shared uh, ledger of store of value. And that's for the first time um, you know, something that can happen only now. Before you always had to have, uh, you know, if you wanted a bank, you needed a central banker. A middleman. Um, and today you can have, yeah, ex exactly. You would always need a middleman. Now you're investing in companies essentially trying to build the infrastructure for this blockchain network. Why do you think it's the smart place to put money and that this is transformative technology whose full uses we haven't even realized yet. There are really two types of use cases uh, for this tech. One is, I would argue, store of value, and that's what Bitcoin is. Um, it is basically uh, essentially money. It's trying, tr trying to be a new type of digital gold. But with gold, it's heavy, you have to store it. And again, even when you're uh, buying or selling gold, you usually have a central, uh, you know, repository or you know someone has to hold on to that gold for you um, and in this case as long as the internet works um, it's you know some way for that store of value to basically exist uh, and that's never existed before some of the people we've spoken to say look if you just think blockchain is based on the value of bitcoin today or tomorrow you're missing the point this is more than just the fluctuating values of cryptocurrency so give me some examples some some use cases that you think would be beneficial to me, the average guy at home, for blockchain technology. Absolutely. So Bitcoin is really sort of the first thing that was created that could show that you could have uh, this type of ledger. And it's basically this is the simplest possible type of that. Um, there are new types of smart contracts um, and smart contract cryptocurrencies that have come out, uh, Ethereum being the most um, popular one. And really, that merges this idea of money with a programming language. So what you can actually do is create a decentralized application. Um, and that's significant in that before, you needed to actually create a centralized application. You know, For instance, Uber, eBay, Airbnb are great examples in you know, centralized technology that have all become very, very powerful pieces of our economy. Um, you know, a great deal of goods and services get transacted over these centralized uh, technologies. And so the promise for the next stage of evolution for cryptocurrency is not just uh, the store of value, but actually something that could be a medium of exchange. So this idea that you could actually transact business with other people uh, you know, over the internet, over um, a smart contract platform that you know, you don't know that you don't trust, but um, you know this this uh, you know, trustless system could take the place of something that's highly centralized. Um, and the only way that that can be interesting or valuable is if it's better, cheaper, or faster than what else is out there. And that's sort of the holy grail of uh, what may happen. But you know, that's kind of what happened back in 1994 when the internet first came online. Uh, a lot of people talked about it as something that you know, no serious consumer could ever use. No real business could possibly be transacted across this because we already have fax machines. 
Um, there are you know, very prominent people out there who uh, are economists who came out and said you know, the sum total impact of the internet will be not greater than that of the fax machine. Uh, but now sitting here in 2018, that's become you know, certainly not true. I've seen you mention the photography example before. So let's say I'm a freelance photographer. I take a great picture. And I want to own the rights should it be repurposed or resold in the future. Potentially, how would blockchain technology allow me to make my money? Yeah, so you can imagine a decentralized application that serves as an exchange. And so rather than go to Getty and upload your photo and say, hey, here's my photo, anyone can license it, um, you would go onto this decentralized platform um, and actually provide that as uh, something that someone else could license. And because it's a decentralized app, uh, there, you know, it, it basically doesn't require a you know, central body like Getty. It could be sort of more like open source software. Um, if you think about uh, the power of Linux as um, a, a server operating system, Linux uh, did not have a central organizing body to say this was uh, you know, a version of Linux that you should use. And so likewise, you could have um, you know, decentralized uh, applications that allow exactly this, and it could take uh, less of a fee. It could have actually uh, you know, a, even a larger database than a centralized version of that. And that would be one example of uh, a future decentralized exchange that would be a great um, medium of exchange. So there is a downside to this Wild West moment as well. You have a number of scams out there looking to take advantage of people who perhaps don't know as much and, and are looking for ways to make money. Do you think regulation as, as different parts of the world figure out what and how to regulate this will be helpful in the short term or is that really more of a long term benefit? Yeah, I mean, I think I welcome regulation. I think that um, a lot of the things that are happening in cryptocurrency today resemble the 1920s bucket shops. And so a lot of uh, folks who might not have uh, the ability to do their own diligence or certainly their own technical diligence into these technologies, uh, they're investing in things that are Ponzi schemes or uh, straight up Ponzi's. They actually are not things that will ever ship real code, will ever create a real good or service, and will not create value for society. And so it is, uh, you know, it is the Wild West. It's uh, pretty you know, dangerous, I would say, um, for uh, people to sort of just jump in. Um, I think be very wary with uh, hot tips that you might be getting from you know, family members or uh, you know, your Uber driver. You know, definitely <laughs> don't go out. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't I go out and buy I shouldn't be taking stock uh, advice from my Uber driver, my you're Uber. saying. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Please don't do that. OK, so as, as we look at the next six months, uh, let's say, where do you think are the best opportunities for people who do want to at least learn more and understand more about this kind of wild new frontier? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I would really start at Coinbase.com. It's uh, got great tutorials and FAQs, and uh, it's really sort of the easiest way to get on board and sort of learn about um, what is out there. Beyond that, um, there is actually a website called Misari, M-E-S-S-A-R-I. Uh, and you can Google that and actually find a lot of information about very specific cryptocurrencies that aren't Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, but ones that could possibly be the future. Um, you know, and that's sort of the opposite of taking advice from uh, your Uber driver. <laughs> well, Gary Tan, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.